Okay, ladies and gents, I'm here to talk to you about microworms. Now, a common misconception about microworms is that it takes one to two weeks to get an active culture ready to go to feed your fish. Now, granted, if you have a giant aquarium full of fish, you are going to need a lot of microworms, but still, here is a culture that I started yesterday. And if you look, I'm holding this very still so you can see over there on the left side of the screen is a bunch of swimming microworms. Yes, this is from a culture I started yesterday. You can see there are tons of them. Now, the reason why people always assume that microworm culture takes one to two weeks to harvest from is because they expect it to get to the point where they're crawling up the sides like in this culture which is a little harder to see but all that is microworms crawling up the side my camera doesn't want to focus on it because let's face it microworms are little there we go that's better however if you look inside you will see also lots and lots of little microworms so how do we harvest from a culture that's a day old? Now you can wait till they're a week old, that's fine. But sometimes, if you have a microworm culture that's going bad and you have to start a new one and you've got fry getting ready to hatch, you need a solution. So, how do you harvest your microworms without completely having to scoop out medium, which is why most people harvest from the side of a microworm culture? I don't. Here's what I do do. This is a piece of napkin. It's one of those cheap paper napkins that everyone hates. You know, that comes out of this kind of takeout napkin thing. I save those and throw them in a basket. And I cut them up into little rectangles. Now this is two ply thick because I have it folded in half. I just kind of cut in the middle instead of on the fold. You don't have to. Um, what I do is I wet my napkin with a little bit of bottled water. Make sure it's nice and saturated. Then I take this sloppy wet dripping napkin, I go over to my macaroon culture, and I lay it in there for just a few seconds. You can leave it while you're doing other things with your aquarium and then come back. But when you pull it out, you will have a napkin with a serving of microworm on it. Now it's very, very hard to see in this shot. But that's better. Now, obviously, if you want a bigger sampling of microworm, you can use a bigger culture, you can use more established culture, or you can scrape them off the side of the container. I hate to do that, because when you do, you end up with a whole bunch of medium in there, or if you're going to use non-technical term, you end up with a whole bunch of baby food or oatmeal or whatever you're using to feed your microworms inside your aquarium. And if your bait betas or your angelfish or your fry in general, whatever you're cooking up, is very, very young, the last thing you want to do is foul up the water. Because you're not really supposed to dig around in there and clean out until they're a few days old, preferably a couple of weeks. So if we take a more established culture, you can do the exact same thing. Like I said, this one's a week old. And the longer you leave the napkin in there, the more you're going to get. But you can see there's no medium, or very little, if any, medium on there. But there are microworms. Basically, that moisture acts as a magnet. Usually, I just lay it in the culture. Leave it there for a few secs. Go off and do something else. Like put this. I always think it's amazing people think there are no microworms in a culture until it's a week old. Now granted there's gonna be more in there in a week. Ain't no way around that. But if you're in a real 
pinch, you have microworms within 24 hours. You just can't see them crawling up the sides. They only crawl up the sides when the surface is so crowded that they have nowhere else to go and the entire surface of the medium is covered. Basically, they don't start crawling up the sides until they're overpopulated and about ready to be moved out of that culture anyway. That's the thing about making videos about microscopic organisms. There we go. You can see that real good. Look at all those swimming around on there. Now you can still take this and rinse it off. I got a little medium on this one. You can do whatever you want. In any case, I hope that's helpful to you. I hope you can see now that your microworms don't require a whole lot of attention. Hi dog, this is our dog. She's pouting because she wants to go outside, but it's raining and she's been outside all day, so I didn't see the point. She'll, I'll let her back out later. She can just wait a few seconds. So anyway, hopefully that answers some questions about microworm cultures for you. If you're brand new to making microworm cultures, everyone knows there's a magic formula. Baby food plus water plus yeast in any particular order. I usually just use a sprinkling layer of yeast on top. Any amount of water and baby food and or oatmeal together. Oh, here's our hermit crabs. I was using their lab to, or their light to show you everything. We got one in there and we got one in there. Totally off topic. Anyway, hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, let me know. Thanks.